Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Terra Futura, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, welcome to our modern world, everybody, where we are trying to maximize our production output, uh, and sometimes we do it at the cost of the planet. But if we play smartly, we can maybe make a better future for ourselves, as we are going to be drafting and then playing cards to build up our little nations. Okay, so I've already got the game set up. comes with a whole bunch of cards, a whole bunch of tokens, and this one last deck of cards, which is going to give each player two options for in-game scoring and activation. So let's see. Bepity, skippity, flippity, dippity. And setup is done. We are ready to go. We'll look at Jen's cards in a second. Let's take a look at mine. So these two cards uh, offer two things. Over the course of the game, I am going to build a 3x3 three three grid of cards, starting with this one. This doesn't have to be in the center. This could be in the bottom left or the top right. But the game is over once I have built my 3x3 three three grid. And throughout the game, it's basically an engine I'm building. I'll be building and activating cards to generate more goods to score points. At the end of the game, after the nine cards have been placed, I will either play this card to activate the card in my top right and bottom left once and the card in the middle twice, or I'll do this one to activate something up here three times and here once. And uh, so I've got that in mind. At the end of the game, I'm going to get to take a tenth turn and do this activation or this activation, and I've got to build with that in mind. But there's more. At the end of the game, I will pick one of these two scoring opportunities, which is I can get six points for every set of goods, food, and construction that I've got on hand, uh, which at in adds to the points I already get for having them at the end of the game. Construction is worth five, goods are worth six, food is worth five, pollution is negative one, and raw goods are one point. So for every set of these I've got, I get an extra six. Or if I don't worry so much about the food and I get more construction plus goods, you know, consumer goods, I could get five points for every set of that I've got. So at the end of the game, I'm, I might combine this and this, or this and this, or this and this, etc., etc. So these are things I've got to pay attention to while we're building. Okay. So, let's build. On your turn, it is super simple. You are going to grab one of these eight cards. You are going to add it to your growing nation. And you are going to activate everything in the row and column that you put that card in. Now, before you grab a card, if you're looking for something particular and you do not see it, you have the option of eliminating the uh, card furthest away from the draw deck of either of these two rows, sliding over and making a new one come out. So if you're really desperate for a particular thing. Now, all these cards in the number one row, these are our harvest harvestable goods generation. Hey, here's a wind farm to make uh, energy, or a, a, you know a solar farm to make energy, or you know here's farms, just farmy farms to make basic food, and here's something that will generate the raw goods we need to for construction. You know, um, uh, you know what, what whatever you need for cement and and uh, all the rest of it, or wood, or, or what have you. Okay, so I could grab one of those and start generating the three basic uh, goods, which, by the way, it is... Man, if there was one glitch in the production of this game, it's unfortunate that they chose red and green as two of the cubes because, of course, that's not very colorblind friendly at all. So colorblind players, I imagine you're going to have to get out your Sharpies and mark up all your red cubes or something like that so you know which ones represent the uh, construction materials. Anyway, though, so I could grab one of these to start producing energy or other stuff, or... I could grab one of these. All these cards down here are the ones that do special powers, usually converting something into something better. This is the actual raw machinery of our nation. So what am I going to grab? Well, considering one of my end goals might be to try to do a bunch of construction and goods, you know, if, I'm, if I want to go for that one, this might be worth grabbing. It's basically a strip mine, as you can see from the image, where I can convert one buck into two construction goods, or I can convert one buck into two construction goods and some pollution. Uh, it's interesting. On the other side of our little score reminder is a reminder that, hey, green cubes become food, red cubes become construction, red and yellow cubes become consumer goods, and money, generally speaking, soups up all these other actions, but generates pollution, which can um, really hamper us. So, okay, I'm going to take this. Now, I have to put it adjacent to an existing card. So, I got to put it here, 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 or here. Wrong! 
Oh, I have to jump in and correct the record here, folks. Although, as always, if you watch the Klingon subtitles, I'm sure Paulo would be pointing out at this point just how wrong I am as well. Because here's the thing. Unlike most tile or card-ish tile laying games, you do not have to go adjacent in this game. Uh, you're ultimately going to make a 3x3 three three grid, and you're putting a card down, you can put it in any of those nine spaces. You don't have to extend from where you started. So you have a little bit more freedom than what I represented here in the run-through. Although, even still, a 3x3 three three grid is not very big. And you're also still very, very focused on the um, row and column activation. Which, uh, let's get to that right now. I'll go ahead and put it like this. And what I'm already thinking is, this might be the center card of my ultimate 9x9. So when I get to the end of the game, I could activate it twice. As a last thing to generate a bunch more cubes. And then maybe, um, this, and if I try to put up here and here, cards that will actually take all those cubes during that final production. That could be pretty cool. Okay. And now the production begins. I get to activate everything in this row and this column. Although right now there's not much. Uh, but later on when I put something here or here, I'll activate this card again. But right now I am activating my hometown and I'm activating my new strip mine. And I could do it in either order I want. I think the order that makes sense is activate my, my center first because, hey, it will generate a buck for me. Now whenever a card generates something, you put the thing on that card for storage um, and uh, uh, the exception of pollution pollution cubes work a little bit differently I'll explain how that goes once I start making some pollution all right so first of all I've activated this now let's go ahead and activate this I will spend that money to generate two red cubes and I've got a choice D um, I could generate three red cubes and really up my production but I would make some pollution now is not a good time to take this pollution because when you take a pollution cube, you can put it on any card you want, um, but it will shut that card down. Uh, and that card will no longer produce anything. That card will no longer um, provide anything that it has previously produced until you can get that pollution cleared away. Now, um, some cards, many cards have the ability to absorb some of the pollution we generate. So if I had this card, Say I'd already done this, and I'd originally made some energy and some money or whatever, and then I built this later on. I could have spent that money to produce three cubes, and then when I produce that pollution, rather than shutting this card or this card down, I have a one-time opportunity to absorb, uh, and this can still produce energy in the future. Um, and so that's something you're trying to balance, how to uh, sequester all that carbon and all the various uh, and sundry other things we're doing. So... I don't want, right now, to shut down either of my productions. So, I'm going to try to go a little bit more sustainably. Um, you know, spending money to up our production kind of represents, you know, the path our world has been on for, you know, basically ever since the Industrial Revolution. Pump more money into it. Produce more stuff. Consequences be damned. Uh, in Terra for Chua, maybe you want to pay attention to those consequences because they are dire. I do not want the pollution, so I'll just generate two. So, I activated this card, made some money, and then I activated this card, spent that money to make some good so I can do some construction later on. My turn is over. Slide on over. A new card comes out and Jen is up at that. Now we haven't looked at her cards. Let's see what she's all about. Okay, so she's got um, along her top row, operate two and then one and then one, or two and two in the corners, and her goals could be food plus consumer goods for seven, three and one, or um, food plus consumer goods plus, you know, raw unprocessed food for four. Every one of those sets. So it's interesting. Either way, I think Jen is definitely looking at a green, as in agriculture-based future, because she's got both of these, and she will pick one of these. And then remember, she'll also be needing to think about how to build to take advantage of that 10th turn where you get to do some super production. So, well, with that in mind, Jen could rush over here and snag this. Hey, any two uh, raw goods will produce food and unfortunately some pollution, but Jen's not going to have the goods to do it. So, I think Jen will go on ahead and if, if, she, if food is in her future, she wants some farmland now. She'll take this, she can put it in any of the four spots. She does need to think about what her layout long-term goals are going to be. Might just leave these here on screen because they might come in handy to help me remember what I'm trying to do here. Alright, so... If Jen is thinking, if this is something that she would like to, you know, maybe it's something like this. And she's already thinking, hey, you know what, the, at the last turn, um, if 
this is her top middle card. She'll be able to activate it, maybe some more food. And then those two things would um, you know, combine to, you know, if she gets this one over here, she'd produce two food at the end of the turn and produce this to get a little bit more food, but she'd also get a little bit more um, production too. That's if she's going for, hey, I want food and um, raw, um, you know, green as well. Yeah, I think she'll go like that. Okay. So, she has done her move, and now, again, she can activate these in the order. She'll activate this one first, because there's no reason not to. She's made some raw, unprocessed food, and now she can make a buck for herself, or she can make another cube. Or, I didn't mention this before, she could do this action. Uh, most of the cards have a top and a bottom action, and you choose one or the other. So, this card says cooperation. What this means is Jen can look around the table at anybody else's nation and she could activate the action on the bottom of one of their cards uh, and get all the benefits. Now, the person whose card is being activated will get a benefit too because say Jen did have, say, say Jen actually, you know, had some money and then later on she decides, oh, I don't want more money or this. I'm going to activate this. She could say, oh, I will use my money to activate your stuff because I would like some red cubes and I don't have any way to make red cubes of my own. And she would have the choice to just make the red cubes or get, uh, make more of them and make some pollution, which she'd have to absorb. But either way, the, um, the money would come to me. And I would get that as a benefit that I could use later on. So that's what this power is. But for now, I think Jen is just going to keep on keeping on uh, making some more green cubes because she's kind of eyeballing this one, which combined maybe with this top and this bottom. We will see. Okay, sliding on over. And, all right, we got some more farmlands there, and it's my turn again. And now remember, the first thing I can do is, if I don't like this, if I'm looking for something particular, I could eliminate this or this, slide over. But, you know what? I think bef uh, before this disappears, I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Um, right. And so now, I've got to install it, and I could install it here, which means I would have defined the width of my nation, or I could put it up or below. You know, I can basically put it any place. And when I'm doing this, again, I need to be thinking long-term about what am I going to activate at the end of the game. So I'm thinking, if this is the center, I'm going to activate this twice. If I put this here, I will not get a bonus activation out of it, which is kind of bummer. But I could put it down here, and then I'm starting to plan that, hey, I'll activate this twice and this once. What is this one? Uh, this one, I have a choice. I can either spend a buck to get a consumer goods plus two pollution. Yikes. That's painful. Or it lets me convert any one um, refined good into a different refined good. And that's really handy because at the end of the game, hey, I might, if, if this is what I'm trying to score, I might have some processed food. And if I'd like to activate this to turn that processed food into construction, which is what I really care about. So that could be cool. But the problem is... What am I going to do with it right now? I would have to generate a lot of pollution. Two pollution. And, I mean, I would shut a bunch of stuff down. But, here's the deal. If I look a little bit into the future, I can see here is a big um, pollution cleanup project that we could do that can absorb up to four pollution cubes. And so far, Jen hasn't really produced any pollution, so I don't think I have to worry about that disappearing. If I could snag that on my next turn, I could afford this. So let's take a chance. Let's go on ahead and put it here. Okay, and so now I'm going to activate this and this. I will activate this to make some more money, and then I will spend that money down here to produce one consumer good and two pollution. Now, these pollution have to go somewhere. They can go on any of the cards, and I have no cards that can absorb this. So wherever I put these, are they are going to get shut down, which is not good. So, um, let's see here. Oh, man. Well, this has already produced some stuff for me. But, I mean, I, if, if I put this here, I can't get to these. So let's go on ahead and shut down my um, consumer goods production plant and my actual main city. So, um, you know, the pollution is so thick in this city, it really, its, it's productivity has plummeted precipitously. All righty, sliding on over. And I'm hoping to snag that next turn. Because this card, and there are more of them in the deck, is the only way I can move cube, pollution cubes that have already been placed. Even if I build this later on, it'll be too late. I can't move the pollution over here. But the special power of this card is take up to four cubes from other locations and put three of them here and then put the fourth one on here to indicate it is done. Okay. So, that was it. And it is now Jen's turn again. And, um, right... 
Jen would like to generate some food without producing pollution. I believe there are options for that. Yeah, there's nice things where you convert cubes. There's a bunch of them. And it's just none of them come out yet. So, I think, first of all, before Jen takes her turn, she would like to have a greener green production. So, let's say she's going to wipe this one out. Which, like, no! I'm all about... She didn't know that, um, that I have the secret goal of trying to do construction. But, hey, she can see I'm generating a lot of red cubes. So, she can take an, an, uh, an educated guess that I probably want some construction cards. And this is gone now. Boom. Sliding on over. And now she can only do that once per turn. And so now... Um, oh, phew. even if that disappeared, I'd be able to snag this one on my turn. All right. And unfortunately, Jen is sad. She did not get the opportunity that she was hoping for to make some um, more sustainable agricultural production, uh, food production. She's got this one, but it's going to produce uh, pollution. But I mean, she can absorb a little bit of pollution. And remember, remember, uh, very importantly, Every food is worth five points at the end of the game. Regular little cubes are only worth one. Plus, she's got these goals where she wants to be producing more food. So maybe she snags that anyway. Or maybe she waits. Maybe she gets another green cube producer and just waits for some stuff to come out. Yeah, I think so. I think she's going to bide her time. She's just going to get another basic farmland. And now she activates everything in this row. One, two. So Jen's got four points worth of green cubes. Um, plus, I mean, she's got one third of her set that would get her four points. You know, maybe this is what she's going for. We'll see. All right, so another one comes out, and I breathe a heavy sigh of relief. I'll take that, please, because we're filthy over here. Um, you know, all our VCRs and DVD players and cars, well, you know, there was a cost for them. Let's try and clean up our mess. Okay, so I'm going to place this. And, um, like, so interesting, if I place this here, remember, I could activate everything in this. I could do any order. I'd activate this first to clear these out, which would come up. And then I could activate these and generate another car. Or convert my one car into construction. Or convert my one car into, I mean, if I try to go for this one, where I just try and be a little bit more diversified. Hmm. But again, i got to be thinking about, what am I going to activate at the end of the game? Because I'm getting closer and closer to defining my ultimate 3x3 three three grid. If I was still thinking about doing this diagonal, to do this twice, do this once... Um, uh, let's see. If I go something like this... Now, I mean, I, if I put this here, I'll get to activate it two more, three more times. Once when I go here, once when I go here, and once when I go here. So that means I'll have a nice, uh, I'll, uh, you know, so of those three more times, two more times I'll be putting um, pollution because it can only hold up to four. So I know wherever I'm going to put it, I'm going to do that. It's just a question of where am I going to put this thing? Well, the one thing I don't want to do, I don't want to put it here because if this ends up being my top left corner, activating this three times at the end of the game would be an epic waste. I'll go on ahead and put it here. All right. Although, another thing I'd like to do is uh, if I put this here, you know, I, I could just be cheeky and just go hardcore into production knowing this will clean stuff up. So I activate this, it cleans it up. Then I could activate both of these again, generate more pollution, and then I could activate this on a future turn and gobble those two pollution up. But then that means this is the top of this row. Is this my middle row or my leftmost row? If it's my leftmost row, then I know there's no way I'm going to be activating this. Okay, you know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to put this here, which means it's really going to lock me in probably to doing this. So I have less to consider because even though this is a very tiny game, there's a lot going on here. So I'm putting this here, which means I'm activating this entire column. I'll activate this first to clear these up so these can activate. I'll generate another money, and then I'll spend that money here and make another car or um, big screen TV or whatever it might be. And then I just generated two more um, pollution, and I'll just go on ahead and put them right here. And boom, it's done. Um, which is kind of a bummer because that means when I put something here and here, this will do nothing for me because it's already finished. But on the other hand, I got 12 points worth of consumer goods sitting around over there. So uh, there we go. That's that. Sliding on over. And it is Jen's turn. And she's saying, where? All right, so she's going to burn this again, looking for some green um, agriculture cards. Nope, still not finding it. Okay, well, what is she going to do? It might be time to start trying to diversify. And remember, Jen has um, two cards. Whichever one she chooses, she does want to have consumer goods. So maybe it's time to start paying attention to that. 
Hmm, let's see here. So this new one came out that requires red and yellow, which lets her make cars are red and two yellow, which lets her make cars more sustainably instead of doing it in a dirty way because this way generates pollution. But she could also be making the consumer goods over here, uh, either by making pollution and spending money like I've been doing, or by converting one thing into another. So that's the thing. I mean, if she could ever get the thing that produces all of her green, I mean, one of them's already disappeared. She might regret that later. Uh, interesting. All right. You know, if she does do a little bit of pollution, there's this thing here. So Jen could try to snag that. Although snagging it right now would be terrible because she's produced no pollution yet. She's been so green. Um, right. So this is interesting. Okay. I think Jen is going to diversify a little bit. Um, which is tricky because she's kind of... Well, she's kind of looking at this. Two reds would let her do construction. Now, construction is not important for her, for her end goals. But hey, construction is worth five points. Um, but the thing is, where is she going to get those red cubes? She could get them from me. Um, because she could, although, uh, to do it, she would need money. So that's the problem. If she activated this to get the money, then on a future turn, she could activate this to spend the money to activate my uh, strip mine so she could get... So, actually, yeah, that's not going to work right now. So, what is Jen going to do instead? You know what? I think Jen's going to diversify a little bit more. Um, she's looking at this down in the future. Maybe she should start producing some uh, energy, which will also let her eventually, when she starts um, generating pollution, it's almost unavoidable. I mean, uh, it's the nature of our modern industrialized world. She'll have three opportunities to clean it up right away, whereas I had to burn one of my spaces. So, where is she going to put this? She puts this right here. She gets some more production. So, how about she gets another green? and a yellow, and now she'll take some cash. So now she's got cash on hand if, on a future turn, she wants to activate this card to get these reds to activate this, let's say. Okay. And, okay, so Jen has now just defined a big restraint, a big portion of the overall size of her world. Is this still going to be the top row? Is she going to go for this one? This is her top row? Or she has not decided. Well, this could be, she could activate this twice. She's already got enough green cubes if she goes for that. Well, we'll see how things evolve. Sliding on over, coming on out, and it is my turn. And I think this one really makes sense for me. I'm really glad it stuck around. Jen was thinking about it, but she didn't quite have her situation. So I'm going to take this. That means I'm, when, I, I, when I activate, I'm going to be able to use this uh, stuff I've already got lying around to start doing construction. Or I could do much more efficient uh, construction with only one cube. But you guessed it, more pollution. So what's it going to be? Where am I going to go? What am I going to activate? Kind of, this is a beautiful thing. Generate some more money to generate some more cubes to pump those cubes into production. Yeah, I kind of like that. But then if I do this, my grid is confirmed. I mean, I've got no more wiggle room. And well, it means this is my top left, which means I will not be doing this, which means I will be doing this, which means at the end of the game, I'll activate this twice, this once, and this once, which has been my plan all along. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So let's come over here. Generate some more money. Let's spend that money to generate some more cubes. And let's try to be a little green, since I have no way to absorb it right now. I could, um, you know, generate more cubes. But all right. And now let's go on ahead and spend two of these over here to do our first major construction project, which is worth five points. Okay. Nice. Dippity, flippity, skippity. And all righty. So Jen, once again, has the opportunity to um, generate food in a slightly more dirty way. Um, you know, some kind of big chemical processing plant and all of that instead of the nice green one that she's waiting for. All right, well, uh, let's go on ahead and burn this, she says, to find the real if she tries to go green. Nope, these are... Right, so, and Jen's running out of time. She's producing a bunch of low-value um, basic goods. She needs to start producing um, high-quality goods. And, you know, no matter what, I mean, Jen wants, um, you know, processed green, so... I guess she'll go on ahead and take this. All right. So this was not her plan, but you know what? Sometimes you got to make compromises to feed your nation. So where's Jen going to put this? And remember now, Jen does have a buck. So if she wanted to, she could. if she activates this card, she could spend that to activate one of my cards, um, which is interesting. Uh, but you know, that's because she was planning on activating this if she would have gotten that card, but she didn't. So where is she going to put this? Again, remembering that she might activate this twice at the end of the game. This might make sense. The, um, 
Well, no, 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 no. She's got all these green cubes. She needs something to convert these green cubes. They're just worth hardly anything otherwise. So this is something that she, if she does this right now, well, she might want to activate right now to start getting some, um, but then later on converting, you're activating this multiple times to convert other stuff. If she does that. Oh. Drat, drat, drat. Drat, drat, drat. Or she could take this. She's got the yellow she needs. She just needs a red, which she could pay me to get my red to generate this and start producing consumer goods. But she only... I, mm, ah. But here's the deal. She puts this here. Then, hey, uh, she makes more yellow. She'd have to put this here to activate this so she could copy me so she could make a consumer good and her first pollution. Um, but remember, she wants at least one consumer good. So, yeah, I think she's going to take this one. The uh, Fujung, um, you know... Uh, Consumer Goods Manufacturing Factory, which could be powered by solar, um, you know, if she uh, if she has a little bit more energy to go. Otherwise, she's going to pollute the place. So, what is she going to do? Hmm. All right, and she still hasn't decided which of these two end scoring she's doing. Would she want to activate this again at the end of the game? If say this was the bottom right corner, if she goes for that, would she want to activate this twice? If she's got a lot of uh, energy and uh, red. I mean, she's about to get two reds, so she knows she's going to want to activate this a couple more times. But she's going to activate it when she goes here and here. Will she need to activate it at the end of the game? Is, she, is this something she's not going to do as much? Should she just put it right here as kind of a one-time thing? Yeah, I think she's going to do that. So she's doing that. She's going to make more energy. So now she's got two energy. She needs the red, so she's going to spend her buck. No, she can't because she didn't activate this. Ah, oh, right. Which means she doesn't have what she needs. So, okay, so she put this... There we go. So she's activating this whole row. So the first thing she's going to do is activate this building to spend the money to um, run my um, production house. So I store the money here. Or was it here? There we go. And Jen gets two red cubes here. And now she says, hey, let's activate this. Let's use a red cube and one, since she, um, which means she is going to produce pollution because she didn't have quite enough energy. But she does have ways to store that um, without shutting anything down. Although there is still a problem. Because here's the deal. At the end of the game, remember, you get you don't get negative one point for every cube you've got. You get negative one point for every card you have that has any amount of pollution on it. So right now, I have negative one point from pollution because I've gotten it all sequestered here. Jen has negative one point in pollution, even though she's only generated one. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Okay, but all of that was to get Jen's first consumer good. And she got it kind of dirty. All right, sliding over. New one comes out. Okay, this is like what she's looking for. She's got a bunch of cubes, um, you know, clean production of anything she wants. That wasn't the card she was looking for, but she's hoping she gets it. Um, right, and so now it is my turn. Okay. And that's pretty hot and tempting for me too, I'll be honest. But... I think I'm. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm hey, I'm. I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a mess again uh, because I'm gonna act generate this and generate more pollution and then just suck it all up onto this thing, onto this uh, sponge. So, but again, where I'm gonna put this? I, okay. Well, if I want to activate this, I need to put it here or here. Does that affect me? No. Either way. No. I'll, I'll put it here. There we go. Because now I get to activate this and this and this. Nice little one, two, three, easy combo. So first of all, let's activate this by spending this buck to generate another consumer good and two more pollution, which we'll just go on ahead and put on the sponge. Um, and then let's activate this to... Uh, what the heck? <sighs> Wait a minute. Oh, now I don't have the money. Oh, no! I don't have the money to run this because I used the money to run that. Okay, then you know what? You know what? I would have put this... Let's put, put this over here instead. So... I, I put this here to run this, spending the money I got from Jen, thanks very much. And now I'm going to activate this, which is spend these two without making a mess. Or, oh no, I could, I could be a bit more... Uh, Alright, I could just spend one to make some construction and a little bit more pollution that I can totally absorb. And this card can absorb one more. And now I could activate this, but there's no more pollution to suck up. So basically, I, um, I'm not getting as many core actions done, but I'm, I'm at negative two points for pollution. But I have produced a bunch 
a bunch of stuff. I am well on my way. I mean, if this is what I'm going to score, I, I've now got two and one, so I've got at least five points. If I get one more or no, I'd have to get two more construction to get a 10 points. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe this one makes more sense, but I'd have to start making some food too. But remember, this is a converter. So I still got time. I've still got to think about that. But anyway, sliding on over, coming on out, and another cleanup job. Jen says, all right, I need to start converting these cubes into points. So Jen will take this. This was not what she was originally hoping for. Um, right. So where is she going to put it? All right. Okay. She puts this here. <clears throat> then... She gets to act. She gets to make two more cubes. She gets to pump a bunch of cubes into this, but she won't get to activate this because she does not have. She has the. She does not have the energy she needs. But if she puts this here, this might be the thing she activates twice at the end of the game. And if she doesn't, oh my gosh! So what's she gonna do instead? Put it down here? Maybe. Maybe things have changed. Yeah. Then she's gonna put it down here. All right. Which means she generates some more. She generates some more in this row, and she can now use this. Let's start gobbling up all of this greenery. One, two, three, four, to produce food or consumer goods or construction. Big dis or food, Do totally food. No two ways about it. So that I mean, so now Jen's sitting on um, eleven points worth of stuff, and she has already completed. She's got one extra set of four because she's got one and one and one. The question is, duh, I mean, what is she going to do? Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, so. Slide on over. And another one of these. Okay. My turn. What am I going to do now? I'll be honest. I'm not quite sure. There are a lot of options to consider keeping this in mind and what I'm going to activate more and more. Remember, remembering, of course, the last card I play on uh, round nine is going to be the most powerful because if I, say, put it here, I'll activate it and uh, a bunch of other cards. Yeah, actually, putting these in the corners has made that tough. Oh, man, my super last turn is going to be wasteful because by then both of these will be filled up. But, hey, these have allowed me to do supercharge my production while Jen is trying to be clean and lagging behind. But maybe that'll pay off for her at the end of the game. I'm not quite sure because I'm going to stop right there, folks, because that should give you a basic idea of Terra Futura. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts now, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.